يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين. There are many hadiths or similar narrations which says that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is free from the people if they don't distinguish their nar. From the Qufar. What is the implications of that hadith in our times, especially with the new counter-terrorism <coughs> laws and the elections which are coming up? <coughs> so, the Prophet ﷺ, he made it clear that he is free from anybody who lives between the Mushrikeen without to distinguish his fire from their fire. Meaning, he is without to distinguish that he does not belong to their camp. The way the camp, each camp, if you imagine that the two armies camping outside, you can see the fire of that camp from a distance and you see the fire of that camp from a distance. Everybody knows, those are the Muslims, they come to fight those Kuffar. They are not the same, they are two separate. Anybody in that camp does not belong to the Kuffar. And anybody in that camp does not belong to the Muslims. That's where we need to distinguish. Who, which deen do you belong to? <coughs> which religion do you belong to? Okay, so the Muslim must distinguish his fire, his deen from their deen, his own allegiance from their allegiance. He must declare himself, I am free from you. Okay, I have bara'a from you. I have nothing to do with your democracy, with your shirk, with your kufr, with your Christianity. I'm a Muslim. I believe in Tawheed. Okay, that's what he's made absolutely clear. So, in, especially in relation to us living in the West, those of us who live in the West, Okay, if they are not able to live in Darul Islam and they're living still in the in Darul Kufr, they need to distinguish themselves from that authority and say, This authority is Tawbut, I have nothing to do with them. And their deen, their democracy, their shirk, I have nothing to do with it. You need to make it clear. Otherwise, you know, the general meaning of Mantashabbah uh, Bi Minhu, whoever imitates the people, he is one of them. This, uh, this hadith literally means. Whoever makes himself look like one of them, he's one of them. Meaning, if you allow the people to see you similar, imitating them, okay, whether by queuing up at the ballot box, like you know, like, like, like them, or putting your own ballot inside the box just like them, a minimum of it, you are imitating them. But you're imitating them in their own shirk. Okay? So, the way uh, Sheikh uh, Hamad bin Atiq he said that Idharul Deen. Pervading your deen, distinguishing yourself, is not as some people say, just to pray and fast, okay, or even just to give adhan. That's not called idhar al-deen. Idhar al-deen is that you, when you are between the mushrikeen, you say to the mushrik in front of them, opposed, opposing their own shirk. And if wherever their shirk is, wherever their kufr is, you need to oppose it in front of them, so that they know that you are, are opposed to it. They know, for example, he said, and the examples he gave is that if somebody disbelieves in Muhammad, is you need to say in front of them, no, I believe in Muhammad. Because that's your kufr, I'm not one of you. If their uh, disbelief is that they don't pray, you pray in front of them. Okay, And we can add to that, if their shirk is that they vote in the elections and have take MPs, is used, you declare openly, we, we will never vote because the voting is shirk. These are your lords instead of Allah, whereas we have to worship Allah Taala. You need to declare it open. You need to come out publicly and against it and oppose it and say to the people, don't do it. The way when they used to worship the idols in Mecca, the Prophet came out and said, don't worship them. And he said, anybody who watches them in hell fire. Yeah, that's what he said. He would say to him, don't say go to hell. No, Rasulullah said go to hell. Allah said go to hell. He said to those who worship idols, you go to hell. The verse of the Quran says, You and what you worship instead of Allah, is fueled for the hellfire. Is if you worship the idols, go to hell. In the same way, if you worship the MPs, you vote for the MPs, go to hell. You will go to hell unless you repent and change and stop what you're doing. Okay? So you will declare openly, whoever votes is careful. Whoever votes for man-made rules, I should say. So you always pick on the little things. They know exactly what you mean. But they'll pick on it. Ah, what if you vote for a Khalifa? We're not talking about Khalifa. Nobody's electing a Khalifa and men. Nobody is coming out in the, you know, in the, in the UK to elect a Khalifa. For God's sake, don't, don't make the, play games. And say, oh, but Abu Bakr was voting. Yeah, okay, no problem, okay. Let's produce somebody in the UK can rule by the Sharia and abolish all this democracy. So, no, no, now you're extremists. 
<laughs> so, so don't, you know, don't play. When we say, you know, don't vote, because, stay Muslim, stay Muslim, don't vote, you know we're talking about the general elections coming up to appoint legislators, MPs for parliament. That's what we're talking about. You know it, I know it, they know it. And whoever votes for an MP, he is careful. So we need to declare that publicly, with openly. If you, knew, if you find in your local masjid, in the khutbah, they start to give talks and give lectures or make announcements about the elections and say we need to vote for so and so, you need to participate, stand up. You need to distinguish yourself, even in the masjid. You need to say to them, that person, that committee member, whoever is at the front, say, no, look, you are not. No, we are not the same. Okay? You are Allah yourself. You are, you are sharing with the Ummah Shakeen, the Shirk. Celebrating their festivals is, this, is worse than the one who said Merry Christmas. This one is saying to you, come out and vote. Happy elections. No, that, we don't do that. So we come out and say, no, stop. It's kofa. We don't participate in these elections and vote and stand as MPs. We don't do that. Okay? So, distinguish yourself. Declare publicly exactly you know, what the hukm of Allah is. Wherever you are, whoever you are, doesn't matter. You don't need to be a big scholar to do it. You don't need to be a learned person. Don't let anybody tell you. You don't need to speak Arabic. You don't need to speak Arabic. To be able to answer the people, say to the people, look, we only worship one God. You don't need to know Arabic to know that. It's our own fitra, we know it. Okay? Of course, good. Learn the Arabic, alhamdulillah. And in 10 years' time, when you've learned fluent Arabic, you can continue saying, don't vote. And the hukum will change. It doesn't suddenly become shirk only when you learn Arabic. But all the time it was tawheed. It's shirk now and it's shirk then. So until you've learned the Arabic, continue to call and openly declare that voting for an MP in the elections is shirk in Allah. We don't want it. We don't know it. We don't want anything to do with it. We wash our hands from it. We have bara'a from it. Be like Ibrahim alayhi salam. قَدْ كَانَتْ لَكُمْ أُسْرَةٌ حَسَنًا فِي إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَلَدِينَ مَعَهُمْ There's a good example for you to follow. Follow in Ibrahim and those with him. إِذْ قَالُوا لِقَوْمِهِمْ إِنَّا بُرَآءُ مِنْكُمْ وَمِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ He said, they, when they said to the people, we are free from you and everything you worship instead of Allah. كَفَرْنَا بِكُمْ We disbelieved in you and what you worship instead of Allah. You and your democracy will disbelieve it. And whoever who disbelieves in democracy is kafir. That's what it means. كَفَرْنَا بِكُمْ وَبَدَا بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ الْعَدَاوَةُ وَالْبَغْطَاءُ عَبَدًا حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَحْدًا only animosity and hatred until you believe in Allah alone. That's called distinguishing your fire from their fire. Okay? And that's called the sunnah. And it's called the hikmah. There's no way for you to have the hikmah better than the hikmah of Allah and the Anbiya. Allah declared, this is the best example for you to follow and copy what they did. Don't say to me, there is better hikmah for us to do the opposite of that and hide our own deen and pretend that we are not uh, free from them and pretend that we are brothers with them. And to participate in the election of the People say to us, yeah, but it says in Islam we must obey the law of the land, things like this. Or they say, you know, we agree, but the harm outweighs the benefit, things like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. First thing, when people say, you know, in Islam it says obey the law of the land, okay, if somebody says, that that is a verse of the Quran, he's kafir because he made up a, a verse of the Quran, lies about Allah. Okay? There's no verse of the Quran or hadith of the Prophet وسلم, whatsoever that says, obey the law of the land. Rather, all of the verses and the hadith, they have a common theme. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And anybody who always orders you something different from that, leave them and obey Allah's Messenger. That's clear. Okay? We obey those in authority among the Muslims, if they rule by Islam. And if the Muslim rule by other than Islam, or disobey Islam, we reject him and we go back to Allah and Muslim. This verse in Surah Nisa, verse 59, it says, Ya Ladina Amanu, Atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul. He said, Oh, you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. What will in Amri mean come for internazatum fi shayin for doing Allah and Rasul? And those in authority among you, if you differ with them in any matter, leave them, go back to Allah and His Messenger. That is the best for you. Okay? So this is what we need to understand. Okay? The obedience is to Allah specifically. We obey Muhammad because he is obedient to Allah. Okay? The Prophet said, Man ata'ani faqad ata Allah. The one who obeyed me has obeyed Allah. Okay? So we obey Muhammad because it's obedience to Allah. Because his speech is revelation. His actions are revelation. But the man who is not in the speech, in the speech and action is not revelation, we will only obey them if they order us in something which is in accordance with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So there's nothing called obeying the kufr law of the land you're living in, the Arab kufr. There's no way it's going to happen. Rather, Allah says the opposite. Surah Ahzab, verse 1, Allah says, Ya you and Nabi of Taqilla, Wala tuti al kafirin wal munafiki. Said, Don't, O oh, oh, Prophet, fear Allah. Do not obey the disbelievers or the hypocrites. And the other verse in Surah, this is Surah An'am, Surah 6, verse 121, Allah says, That, Wa in inna kum la mushrikun. Okay, regarding those who make man made laws, you know, making halal or other made haram and so on, he said, If you obey them, you become mushrikin. You become the polytheists. So there's nothing called obey the law of the land. There's something called obey Allah and let the shaitan and tawhi go to hell. Okay? That's what we have in terms of obedience. Yes? So like, because oh, obviously that we live in England, so like not obeying the law but actually just living within it, like, does that make sense? Yeah, since so nobody's saying here yeah, yeah. you have to go yeah. out and find every law and break it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's not what it means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? We don't obey, you know, Allah Ta'ala says don't steal. Okay? And the law of the land says don't steal. So what? We don't start stealing. Allah said don't steal. So I don't steal because Allah said it's haram, for, illegal for me to steal. Not because of the queen. Who cares about the queen? Okay? I don't uh, drink because Allah said it's haram, illegal. Even though the law says it's legal. Okay? I don't buy insurance because Allah said it's illegal. Even though the law says you must. You understand? So we will obey Allah's laws and we don't care about the, the man-made laws. Okay? If they happen to be similar and coincide, okay, that's not a problem. But we don't obey it because of the queen, because the queen has no right to be obeyed. We obey Allah because he has the right to be obeyed and he's the only one who has the right to be obeyed. Okay. Um, there was a noticeable number of uh, Muslim looking people in police uniform. Mm. And um, <laughs> they say that this is part of their duty of commanding good and forbidden evil, so using Quranic verses to justify the position. Have they understood the Quranic verse? You know, sometimes there's there is such a clear evidence against what people these people are saying. The Prophet sallam said that there will be rulers after me who are you know who will leave my sunnah and they will leave my uh, tradition. They will be oppressors. And he said, you know, somebody asked, what should I do in that time, Ya Rasulullah? He said, do not be for him a tax collector or a police shurti police. And do not be for him a soldier. That is for a Muslim ruler, Khalifa, who is an oppressor. He said it's a sin for you, it's haram for you to be for him police officer. Okay. In the first place. So let's say for argument's sake, the Queen Elizabeth was actually a Muslim. And that David Cameron was actually Dawood Cameroon or Kamran. And actually you know, Sheikh al-Islam, Mufti. And he was ruling by Islam. Which is some oppressing all these killing Muslims in Afghanistan and all the business. Even then it would be haram for you to be a police officer for them. So what about if you become a police officer, a soldier for Fir'aun, for Pharaoh? No, it's not allowed. That becomes the kufr. That's what Allah Ta'ala said about Fir'aun. He said that he drowned and destroyed Pharaoh and his soldiers as well. Because they're all the same. Because they used to obey him. And they, used to, they made that, you know, Allah made that their own cause and their own destruction. The one who fights for the Taghut is his soldier, is the enforcer. Enforces his own oppression and his man made laws. He is the kafir like the Taghut that he is uh, working for or fighting for. Those who believe, they fight in the way of Allah. Those who disbelieve, they fight in the way of Taghut, the way of man made laws. Man, uh, way of uh, kufr rulers, kufr regimes. You are the one, if, if you're a police officer, you're the one you're going to enforce their own kufr. You're the one going to arrest the Muslims. When they're fighting Muslims, they're arresting and attacking, you know, arrest your sister. When they arrest a Muslim sister, take away their children from her home, from her arms, from her own bedroom, you're going to take her. You're going to be there as well with them. And they will take you especially. Why? Because you have a beard. Okay? Because you speak their language, just in case they say something that slips past, you know the other officers, so you can catch it. So you are one of them if you do that. Allah says, "Oh, you believe? Do not take the Jews and Christians as allies. They are only allies to one another. And whoever among you allies with them, he is one of them. So fear Allah and don't be a police or a soldier for these tawabits. <laughs>